Hi, I'm Joelle from SALT Software, and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to analyze a language sample using the database menu. I'm going to be using the newest version of SALT, SALT 20. When you first open the software, you're presented with this dialog box, and I'm going to go ahead and select Open, and Samples, and Analysis Practice, and we are going to be selecting Carter. Pukins gets her way. So here's our narrative story retail from Carter. He's a second grader. So again, we're going to be working with the database menu. So everything that we're selecting is going to be based on the normative data from the SALT reference database. So the first step is to select our samples and settings that we're going to compare Carter's sample to. So here we have the three steps to select the database. Just FYI, if you're interested in looking at the information about the database, you can click Database Snapshot, and this will tell you about the participants, the elicitation protocol, transcription notes, and coding. So in case you're interested, that will be there once you select a database. So this has already pulled in the default database because we have a header at the beginning of the transcript. So it pulled up Narrative Story Retail and Pukins Gets Her Way as a subgroup. So that's the right database. That's the one we want to um, select. However, you can always hit Select the Database and then you're presented with all of the SALT reference databases. So we have our correct database. Step two is to select the age, grade, grade or gender criteria. I'm going to go ahead and take the default on this, which is age match plus or minus six months. Sometimes you might have to tweak that a little bit, but generally that gives you a really good a number of comparison um, samples. So I'm going to click find match samples. There's 82, so that looks pretty good. And then step three is the method that we're using to equate the samples. And I'm going to go ahead and select same number of total words. You could do um, analysis set utterances or time if you wanted to. And then we're presented with the comparison set. So I have 39 samples with 312 words. That is adequate. That's enough. Generally, we want at least 20 comparison samples. You have um, different options here. Sometimes there's a payoff between more samples but less words. So you have to make the best choice. But for this one, I'm going to take the first option and go ahead and select that. Just a note over here is our standard deviation interval setting. I typically keep mine at one just so measures are flagged and marked for me. However, if you want to, you can go in and select, type in whatever um, your district requires for standard deviations. Um, my district's 1.75, so that can be edited if you need. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So we've selected our database, and now we can run all of these reports from our database menu. The newest part of SALT 20 is how the menus are organized. So what we've done is we've organized the menus by language domain. Hopefully this will make it easier for clinicians to run reports that are most salient to what they're interested in looking for or analyzing in their language sample. So the first section is overview. We'll be pulling those reports. Um, macro analysis is if you've done narrative expository or persuasive scoring scheme. Syntax and morphology, we have a summary for that section. And then also if your sample has been scored for the subordination index, that will be there. Semantics, verbal facility, errors, and then the explore menu. So let's go back up here to the overview and we have our standard measures report. We also need to select what our report is going to be based on. So since it's a narrative retell with a very um, clear beginning, middle, and end. The entire transcript is recommended. If you're doing something like a conversation, then you would probably want to equate by length. But this is recommending entire transcripts. I'll go ahead and select that. And then SALT is calculating the measures. And in just a few seconds, we'll have our report. Okay, and here is our standard measures report. So this is kind of the global overview with lots of language measures. Everything on the left side is the child's measure, and then on the right side is the database information. 
So we start with transcript length that tells us about the transcript, speech intelligibility, the um, narrative scoring scheme, composite scores listed there, and then we have the um, syntax and morphology section that looks at MLU and morphemes and verbs. Semantics is vocabulary, so number of total words, different words, and then we have the moving average for total words and different words, and then the moving average type token ratio. The next section is verbal facility, so that's kind of the pauses, um, the amazing, if they are repeating, revising, or using lots of filled pauses, that information is there. And then down at the bottom is the information on errors. So we can see that Carter's language sample looks pretty good. Um, he has an age appropriate mean length of utterance, just a hair lower than the database mean. Um, he's using pretty good verbs per utterance. Um, it does look like his SI score is a bit lower at um, 1.14 standard deviations below the mean, so we might want to just check on that and see more in more detail why that's a little bit lower. And it looks like semantics are a relative strength for him. He has a number of different words at 65, so that was above the database mean. And then if I go down and look at the verbal facility, I might want to take a look at his mazing. So he's using 25% of his words in a maze. So that's pretty significant if a quarter of what he's saying is in a revision, um, repetition, or false start. And he did have a few error codes. So this is a good just kind of global overall place to start and then to run additional reports. The next report in the overview section is the performance report. And what this is going to generate is a narrative written report that you can copy and paste. So what we need to do is fill in how we want the report to be kind of formatted. So we want to use Carter for, and he's a male for the pronouns. So we'll go ahead and select OK there. And then we have this. So this is really handy. You can go ahead and um, save it as a PDF if you want to just be done with your salt analysis and report and send it off, an RTF or a text file. And then what I do is I just copy this and then paste it into my diagnostic report. So it goes through and it gives us, it incorporates the information from the standard measures report and then additional supplementary reports with some light interpretation. So, and this can be edited to suit your needs as well. If there's things that you want to add or pieces that you want to take out, you can certainly do that. But it goes through those same domains with the elicitation task and database overview, transcript length, intelligibility, microanalysis, syntax and morphology, semantics, verbal facility, and then there is some light interpretation. Sometimes that can be helpful if you're new or not quite sure of how to interpret some of the measures. So for example, we mentioned that he had a high number of mazes. So the last sentence here is a high number of pauses and mazes may indica indicate difficulty with word retrieval or utterance formulation. So again, just light interpretation to kind of get you in the um, right direction as far as interpreting what the measures mean. And then the errors section. New to SALT 20 is the quick look. That's in the overview section again. And we're going to base that on the entire transcript. And what this is, is just a simple, easy to read table. There are no numbers or stats on here. So this was pulled from the standard measures report and other reports, but it's not giving you any specific stats or numbers. So this is really nice if you're in a meeting and you don't have a lot of time to get into a lot of specifics, but the skills are marked by strength, weakness, or if they're within normal limits. So we could say for Carter, his semantics and vocabulary is probably a relative strength. However, he had weaknesses in the area of um, his SI composite score was a little bit lower and his maze words as a total word of percent of total words was also elevated or relative weakness, but everything else was in normal limits compared to um, the database comparison. So that's just a nice handy report that can be printed off and it just takes a second and it's easy to read and understand um, for parents and teachers, etc. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and look at, um, let's go into the syntax and morphology and just look at his subordination index score. So I'm gonna pull that up. And we'll just see that it looks like he had mostly SI1, 34 utterances, five SI2s, so that was a little low, and then SI3s, um, typically there'll be one or two of those on a transcript. So it looks like he's mostly using rather simple um, syntactic structures. So that might be something that we'd want to explore further. Um, let's go ahead into the verbal facility because we remember that that was an area of concern. So I'm gonna to go to the verbal facility summary. Each one of these sections has a summary, so that's kind of a nice place to start too. And I'm gonna go equate by length. Okay, and here is the summary. So this is gonna have information on rate and pause and then the mazes. So we can see his sample was a little bit longer. And then I'm gonna go down and look at the pause information. So it looks like he had eight pauses, which was higher than average for a total pause time of um, 30 seconds, which is pretty significant. And if you recall um, on our standard measures report as a percentage, it was only 16%. So that was within normal limits, but he has a lot of them. So pauses are definitely opportunity based. Um, since his sample was a little bit longer, he had more opportunities to have pauses. So that may be something that we're concerned about. Um, and then if we go down to the maze summary, what this does is it breaks apart the maze, kind of gives you more descriptive detail of what's happening. So just tons of information there. Um, this is, I like to look at the maze components. So it's revisions, repetition, and filled pauses. And then each one of those, there's information on, was it a part word, a whole word, or a phrase revision? Part word, whole word, or phrase repetition. So it looks like he's using a lot of whole word repetition. So he had 26 of those. And he also, I mean, 12 phrase level revisions is quite a few. So he's definitely um, having some difficulty getting the sentences out with that many of them and as a large percentage of his total words. So he had total of 69 maze components. So again, that would be something we'd probably target in therapy. I also like to look at the error summary with all of my samples, equate by length, just to see what's going on. Is there a pattern to the errors? So he had a total of 10 error codes, which was higher than the database mean. Again, if it's a number, it's very opportunity based. So his sample was within five minutes, um, he had 10 errors. So he had percent utterances with errors was 21%, which was a little bit elevated, but not necessarily highlighted. But then if we look at the count, um, that's a little bit higher. So it still may be an issue. It looks like um, just kind of a spread, some word level errors. Um, he had five of those and then some pronoun errors and a couple of error of overgeneralization. So we may want to again go in and look at that more clearly. Okay, so hopefully that gives you just a quick overview of how to use the database menu in SALT using SALT 20. Thanks for watching.